It all begins in a desert, where a lone child stumbles along, gnawing on a human finger, searching for his mother. A few miles away, a car drives down a road that abruptly ends in the middle of the desert. The man driving the car steps out and continues on foot. Wyndham is a photographer who came here to capture the solar eclipse. After taking a few photos and noticing that the day is coming to an end, he tries to return to his car, but unexpectedly encounters a boy who seems lost and frightened. Wyndham is ready to help, but the boy doesn't seem to want it. He points in the direction where he lost his parents and walks away. Trying to help the boy find his way home, Wyndham follows him, but the boy rudely refuses his support and leaves. The man is left alone in the darkness, with no way to return to civilization. Wyndham lies down to sleep on the ground, but struggles to do so, reliving the day's events in his mind. Suddenly, he hears strange sounds. He follows the noise and soon finds stakes with ropes strung between them, from which hang bottles that produce a melodious chime in the desert. Before him is a large canyon, at the bottom of which stands a wooden house, around which a woman is wandering, singing a song. Wyndham asks for help, but she enters the house as if not hearing his pleas. He finds an iron ladder leading down and begins to descend. However, the ladder only reaches halfway down the canyon, and from there, it's just an ordinary rope ladder. Wyndham overcomes both and approaches the house. He knocks persistently at the door, but receives no answer. So. Wyndham opens the door himself and enters. The woman, standing at the stove, greets him calmly, as if she had been expecting his arrival. She offers him dinner, and although he refuses, she serves him some soup and places it before him on the table. Wyndham is grateful for her hospitality, but continues to ask questions about how to leave this strange place. He tells her about the boy he met and asks for water. The woman, named Alina, suggests that he rest until morning, and Wyndham gratefully accepts her care. He lies down in the bed she points out, observing as Alina tidies herself and notes that she is young and beautiful. The next morning, he gathers his things and heads outside, hoping to find a way home. But strangely, he cannot find the rope ladder he descended the previous day. Without it, reaching the iron section is impossible. Wyndham returns to the house and, taking out his camera, takes pictures of the surroundings and the drawings on the canyon walls. Everything is quite gloomy and reminds him of death in all its forms. He then notices Alina, who is busy repairing the roof, and asks her about the missing ladder, but she either does not understand what he is talking about or pretends not to. Although her words imply that there are other residents here, she does not tell him anything directly. Disappointed, Wyndham walks around the canyon, periodically calling for help, but to no avail. Later, Alina asks him to undress so she can wash his clothes, saying it wouldn't be proper to return home so dirty. The man has no choice but to comply. That night, he struggles to sleep again, goes outside, and once again tries to find a way out, but there is none. In the morning, he searches the house and, finding a hammer, tries to climb the canyon wall. Suddenly, he notices a movement above, and then a chicken carcass falls down, causing him to lose his balance and fall. Wyndham regains consciousness in the darkness. His leg is injured by his own hammer, and he cries out in pain. Alina rushes to help him, but she does not answer his questions about the children he saw on the cliff. For several days, he drifts in and out of fever, unable to distinguish between night and day, unsure if he is truly seeing children around him. But the day of recovery comes. Limping, Wyndham makes his way outside. He demands that Alina tell the children above to pull him out of there, but she pretends not to understand him. She offers him to stay, promising to take care of him and ensure his well-being. But Wyndham doesn't need this. He wants to return home, to his work. He rudely pushes Alina away, rejecting any help. The man examines his leg and realizes that it will be a long time before he can use it fully. Suddenly, he hears voices from above and looks up to see the boy holding a little girl by the hand. The pair cheerfully ask how they can help, and upon learning that Wyndham wants to climb up, the boy promises to bring ropes and pull him out with his winch. But before leaving, he asks a rather strange question about Wyndham's favorite color. Wyndham replies that it's red and begs them to hurry. The boy and girl leave, and Wyndham checks his wallet in his pocket, not intending to return for his other belongings. Suddenly, a rope falls from above, and the same boy advises him to tie himself tightly, which Wyndham does. They begin to pull him up, and the man is already anticipating his rescue, but about halfway up, the rope stops. Dangling over the canyon, Wyndham screams, then tries to climb the rope himself, but lacks the strength and ends up hanging helplessly under the merciless sun. He regains consciousness from moisture, but when he looks up, he sees the boy spraying him with a hose, mocking the helpless man. 
Several other children appear on the cliff, ranging from very young to older teens. They are all dressed in clothes obviously taken from other people and behave inappropriately. Taunting Wyndham, they start swinging the rope, causing him to crash into the canyon walls, instinctively calling out for help from Alina. He sees the woman shouting angrily at the foolish children and loses consciousness after another blow to the wall. That night, he wakes up in bed and immediately tries to get up. Alina doesn't understand where he is headed, but Wyndham is willing to do anything to escape. The woman explains that the children are homeless, gathered in the desert together, surviving as best they can. Neither of them notices that while they talk, the children stand on the cliff, watching the house's windows burn. The next day, Wyndham watches as Alina releases a bird, envying its ability to fly. The woman brings him a spare set of clothes from somewhere, and although he didn't ask for them, he is touched by her care. Time passes. One day, Wyndham plants a small garden at the bottom of the canyon. Occasionally, the children bring them various items, food and drinks, which surprises Wyndham since there are no stores around. He doesn't understand their behavior. First, they feed him, then they mock him, but Alina accepts it all as normal. The man becomes more involved in the household, marveling at Alina's quiet demeanor. One night, he tries to ask her questions, which are interrupted by cries from the yard. Alina advises Wyndham not to go outside when the children behave like that, but he rushes out into the night and sees the boys, dressed in outlandish clothes, gathered around the house. They start taunting him, pushing and beating him, but suddenly disappear into the night. Wyndham demands answers from Alina. Who are these children? Why do they live here? And why does she stay in this horrible place? But the woman remains calm, not admitting that she is a prisoner. That evening, she comes to Wyndham. The man, starved for female attention, eagerly welcomes her. Time passes, and the first sprouts appear in Wyndham's garden. One day, the boy in the cap calls to him from above. He is friendly and promises to bring some soda. Wyndham returns to his plants and unexpectedly finds a wedding ring and car keys buried in the sand. That evening, Alina shows him a portrait of a woman. Calling her the first mother, she confesses that she is expecting his child. Stunned, Wyndham can't believe his ears. He never wanted to have children here, especially with a woman he barely knows. He yells at Alina, but he has no choice but to accept it. The next morning, he finds his garden destroyed by local birds, but Alina willingly helps him replant, which earns his gratitude. Gradually, life in the house falls into some semblance of order. Alina runs the household, and Wyndham exercises, working on his leg. One day, the boy in the cap visits again, he is very curious and asks Wyndham many questions. Wyndham asks him to help Alina as she is going to have a child and they will need a doctor. The man asks the boy to bring some rope and something heavy to use as a counterweight. He plans to climb out and take them to the city where he can take care of the woman and the boy. The boy promises to do everything when everyone is asleep or gone, but then one of the older boys appears and takes him away. Later, Wyndham tells Alina that the boy wants to study, that he is smart, different from the others, and wants to live differently. The man wants to help him, and help her too, but Alina reacts strangely. She tries to find out exactly what Wyndham is missing here. When he mentions freedom, Alina is puzzled. After all, no one forbids him from doing anything here. Isn't that freedom? Then the man tells her about the outside world, remembering the ocean and a cheeseburger. Alina doesn't know what that is, so Wyndham explains what the dish consists of. The woman admits that her mother used to say that mirages live outside, but here, in the desert, everything is real. Wyndham takes out his camera and shows her the photos he took on the day he ended up here. But what impresses the woman is not the solar eclipse, but a random shot in the car with music playing in the background. At night, he has nightmares about the terrifying faces of the children mocking someone. In the morning, he hears Alina's terrible scream from the yard, and rushing outside, he sees the boy in the cap crucified over the canyon on wires. The savages stand on the cliff, laughing, the woman suddenly declares that brothers wouldn't do such a thing. She accuses Wyndham of killing her son and strikes him on the head with a board. When he comes to, Wyndham finds himself in a cage. Despite his pleas and begging, Alina has no intention of letting him go. She feeds him like an animal, and her children come to watch his suffering. One day, he sees a girl standing on the cliff. She is clearly not from here. Wyndham catches her attention, though he is terrified to shout, fearing to wake Alina. Whispering, he begs the girl to call for help. She understands him, promises to do everything necessary, and leaves, assuring him she will return soon. Wyndham waits in hiding, watching the heavily pregnant Alina as she goes about her chores. Suddenly, he hears screams and sees the savages catching the girl. 
They drag her to the cliff and dramatically kill her before his eyes. Time passes. Wyndham remains in the cage. He involuntarily witnesses unnatural rituals performed by Alina, her children, and her brothers. One day, he suddenly tells Alina that he wants to stay here forever, to raise his child and love Alina who will become his queen. He will teach the child everything he knows and is ready to give himself completely. And this is his choice. But hearing the word choice, the woman laughs. He never had one. He is just a seed blown here by the wind and this child is only hers. The man will stay in the cage until the baby is born. After that, nothing in the desert goes to waste. Finally, the day of birth arrives. Alina screams in the house as Wyndham paces in the cage. The woman reaches him, begging for help, as she has never had such a difficult birth before. She releases the man from the cage, and he does his best to ease her pain. The children stand on the cliff, watching what is happening. Suddenly, Wyndham sees a ladder descending from above, but Alina cries out, and he stays by her side. The child is born at the moment of the solar eclipse. Wyndham takes the baby girl in his arms and kisses her, overjoyed to be a father. Alina begs him to give the baby to her, and when she receives the child, she promises to feed and protect her until she becomes the new mother. Then she will fulfill her purpose, just as Wyndham has fulfilled his now. At that moment, the boy sneaks up and slits the man's throat, exulting over the collapsing body, assuring him that he is doing it for the mother. Later, Alina gathers Wyndham's belongings and packs them in a chest, then goes to the baby, promising her that everything will be fine. Meanwhile, Wyndham's body decomposes in the yard of the house, sprouting grass and turning to dust. This is where this unusual film ends.